What's up guys? This is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. Today is a jump training day and another double day where I'm going to do my plyometric workout in the morning. And then usually I do my second workout, which is either volleyball training or dunk training in the afternoon or the evening. So I get some time to rest. But today I have a really busy afternoon and early evening, so I don't have time to train in the evening. So I'm actually going to be doing a back to back session, which means I'm going to be working out for two to two and a half hours straight. So I'm curious to see if my body can actually exert maximum intensity and maximum effort toward the end of my training. So to properly prepare for this, I've been trying out a new protein powder called Upper Echelon Nutrition, and I'll be making my protein shake to go. Got my trusty Nutra Bullet Blender, which is my favorite blender for making smoothies on the go. Protein powder, two cups of non-fat milk, and I've actually been enjoying this organic brand. I see it all the time, but it's twice as expensive, so I never buy it, but it actually gives me less gas. And for my Asian fans out there who are lactose intolerant, you know what I mean. And then we got our banana for some carbs. I just put my banana in there Then got my protein shake. Whoops, I actually spilled a little bit outside. That's what happens when I try to record with one hand and then put protein in the other. Let's see if I can make it inside the smoothie here. And then we got the milk. Forty grams of protein. Got some sugar from the milk and some more carbs from the banana. Sometimes I like to bring this portable ice chest bag, my ice packs, protein shake, my own endurance Gatorade drink, and then some more Gatorade for afterward to hydrate, just to keep things cold. And having cold drinks during your workouts actually help you perform better. Just got here at Veterans Park in Union City. Got my favorite nine foot 10 rim. See if I can get a dunk today on a little bit lower rim. And it's 8 a.m. And the nice thing about training in the morning is that there's not a lot of people here. It's nice and cool. Except for the old people that wake up and play tennis. But they understand the value of waking up early and getting more done in the day and then relaxing later. The best part about training outdoors is I get to look cool today. Got the compression on. Now I gotta get my warm up in. Just finished my plyometric workout. Now I gotta get ready for the second part of my workout, which is the dunk attempts. And I gotta finish my protein shake just to make sure I have enough nutrients and energy for my second half. So even though my body's fully warm from the plyometric workout, it's actually not max jumping warm, believe it or not. And a lot of it has to do with the mechanics and the neural activation of the right muscles. For the plyometric exercises, I was max intent, max effort. But if I try to go max jump right now, I'm still gonna feel some smaller muscles that haven't been activated. And more importantly, the coordination and the timing to be fully activated. So I like to do this as like a jump mechanics activator or primer. You're essentially breaking up the jumping mechanics into smaller pieces and you can do them at a low intensity so you don't get tired from them because you want to save your energy mainly for the jumping portion. Ah! 
Gotta get those arms primed. see how my ring finger is still recovering from the last session big old scab peeled off and now there's a bruise that's still healing so it's been about five minutes and it usually takes me a while to warm up it's not looking good so far I'm barely grabbing the rim with my palm on 9 foot 10 and last week I was grabbing the rim kind of a little bit below this on a regulation 10 foot rim so hopefully it's just taking me time to get into it again. Got 25 more minutes to see what we can do before I gotta go to my doctor's appointment. All right, that last one felt good. I was finally able to get mid palm, but my timing feels super off. Like my ability to track the ball, time it to get it at the peak of the bounce, try to jam it in. So I'm glad I was able to achieve sufficient vertical. Now I gotta be able to just time it, see if I can just get one jam, one jam today. That's my goal. Unfortunately, I tore another blister trying to grab the rim. It stings, I'm trying to patch it up and then see if I can get some more attempts in. Disinfected again, this is gonna sting like crazy, but I gotta do it so it doesn't get infected. And then wrap it up and try to get a couple more attempts. Dude, that stung like crazy. This is more open than last time. Got a big old flap and it hurts just to move it, but I got it done with. Here's the damage. So unfortunately, I try to grip stuff after bandaging it, but it just hurts too much just to move my hand. And if I'm trying to dunk today and I grab the rim, it's just going to rip off even more skin. Ah, oh, just when I was about to get warm. Sucks. Happened last time too. It's discouraging, unfortunately, that I got to stop. And so I'll just finish off on a high intensity interval training workout. But man, this really sucks. In order to do a hit workout, you got to do one round of very high intensity i'm talking about max intensity movements and then two times the ratio of rest so i'm gonna do four swing blocks to the right to help build up my left leg a little bit more and use max jumping as my high intensity movement and then rest for 20 seconds so the four blocks should take around 10 seconds and i'm gonna do five to six rounds of that Do a little more than five or six rounds. I feel like I can still be explosive at the end. I usually stop when I start to slow down my movements because then it no longer becomes max intensity. But I usually don't like filming like this, but because I have to go to my doctor's appointment and I had to take a little extra time to rewrap my hand and re-sterilize it. I want to still give you guys my summary for today. Sorry for the shaky camera going over some bumps. Like I said earlier, I felt like I was jumping even higher than last week. If you guys remember my first indoor volleyball rep session with Kai, that was the highest I've jumped in a while. 
and I felt super springy and light and the jump training was paying off. Unfortunately, it didn't translate into the dunk attempts, which I was hoping to. And I wonder if the reason was because I was doing it back to back. Last week when I did my dunk attempts after my weight training, I had a nice three to four hour break to rest, let my muscles recover, replenish the glycogen and get some protein in my body. So I felt like I was jumping higher after that session. But I'm curious the effect of doing back to back again. So I might try this method one or two more weeks before I go back to splitting it up. Uh, today I had to do back to back mainly out of necessity just because I, I wasn't available during the afternoon or evening. So even if it does lower my vertical by you know, two inches, I still got my jumping volume in, my mechanics, my jumping attempts, and my dunking timing. So it wasn't a wasted workout. It just wasn't the most ideal situation. And sometimes that's just how it has to be, you know, especially for those who have families or are going to school and working a job. Training is not always gonna be ideal for a lot of us because we have other things going on, but you gotta make do with what you have. I don't even have an access to a gym and I'm still making progress on my vertical jump. So like Tony Robbins said, people fail not due to a lack of resources, they fail due to a lack of resourcefulness. I'll probably take my hand about a week for there to form a scab and then I'll have to maybe dunk with a little bandage on top. And this is probably just the reality. I remember when I was able to dunk in my mid-20s, I remember getting a lot of blisters and tears. So I think this is just part of dunk training, grabbing the rim and getting that much force and rotation on the hand, shearing the skin off. So I know eventually my hand will develop calluses to withstand that. So I'm looking forward to when my hand will finally adapt so it won't tear again. So I hope you guys enjoyed this jump training video. I'm hoping that you guys are also getting your jump training in and setting your own goals. I'll see you guys in the next video.